Glory to God. Always that privilege again on Saturdays to come to us. It's always amazing. And it's such a privilege that the Father has given to build, to build the body of Christ. Amen. Given to build for global impact, to build the body of Christ. Father, we do not take this for granted. We didn't take it lightly. Papa, we're grateful that you have chosen, oh God, the eternness of these vessels to stand and allow you to build your body. What an honor, what a privilege, never to be taken for granted. Father, thank you even for this morning. Thank you for what you're set to say to your people. Thank you for what you have set to direct us to do and to be and to live for your name's sake. Daddy, we are nothing without you. Therefore, we know that with you, like David, we can run through a troop. We can climb on the walls and make it on the other side because you are our God. You are our Father. You are the greatest lover. Thank you for the gift of prophecy. Thank you, Lord, that our lives can be transformed by a word from you. Our lives can be transformed through prophecy released by you through an eaten vessel. Even this morning, I trust you, Lord, that you will speak to your people at another level, another dimension of intimacy in the name of Jesus. Amen? Yes. This morning we're looking at a prophecy and it's amazing that daddy is starting this session this way. What an honor again to just allow him to be God. Allow him breathe through us, through you, through us to you. Amen. Um, gifts of prophecy, awesome gift. We've been looking at it now for almost a month and we're still going to be looking at it as the Lord is leading us. Now, it's, it's not common to hear this question oh um i've been believing god for this my prophecy i received a word of prophecy three years ago i've been expecting god to do this in my life or to do that in my life or to do this through me i've been expecting this to change I've, i mean there are always expectations children of god having one expectation to the next children of god wanting god to do things and it's not coming to pass as expected what is the problem what is it what is the challenge why don't we receive prophecy even when the prophecies come through verses that we believe uh, we believe in verses that we trust what could be some of the challenges of not receiving a prophecy that's what we're looking at uh, this morning what can make me not receive my prophecy one if you don't believe in the in the person releasing the prophecy number two if you don't receive your prophecy with faith meaning as coming from the lord even though coming through a human being you might not be able to walk in it let's say that you receive the prophecy you agree that is from god through a human being what can prevent it not to come to pass not following through your prophecy let's take the first case you don't believe that um, the, the, you're, you're not in belief, you're in unbelief. Many examples, right? We'll look at two this morning. The first one is, all right, let's start with the First Testament. Then we go to the Second Testament or the Old Testament, as some people will call it, then to the New Testament. Um, the example that comes to mind is the example where um, Elijah prophesied in the Old Testament and said, by this time tomorrow, when there was a famine in Samaria, right? And the, the Bible records that there was a man that leaned on the king, means the king's closest friend said, even if God was to open the windows of heaven, it would not come to pass. And then uh -huh, some men of God you don't want to play with. I'm telling you, some especially prophets. Prophets are awesome. A prophet can change your season in a heartbeat. That's who God has created them to be. And that's just the truth. Elijah, a prophet in the spirit of Elijah, don't play with such prophet. Look at uh, John the Baptist. <laughs> Elijah, Elisha, John the Baptist. Those three, if you ever meet a man of God with their grace, I beg you, do, a, do yourself a favor. When they speak, say amen. When they speak, receive it. 
because they don't think they don't have time to manipulate they don't even have time to reason they just say as they hear yes there are times where they say god's mind because they know god's mind not necessarily because god told them to tell you but it's always going to be from a place of inspiration it's always going to be from the spirit of god within them right so all in all it's god speaking to you and the man said even if God was to open the, the window of heaven, it would not happen. And hear what Elijah said. He said it will happen, but you, you won't participate. What happened in this case? This man chose not to believe the word of God. No, Miss Ima, he was an unbeliever. I'm a child of God. There's no way I'm not believing. Listen, belief is not a mental ascent. Belief is not a feeling. Belief, belief is neither just agreeing. Belief is an action word. Belief goes further than I believe. Beliefs go further than, uh-huh, yeah, that's true. Agreeing, right? No. Belief is you know it. And everything about you wants to align and is allowing and wants to receive that word. Now, did this man experience the plenty? Did he see it? Yes, he saw it. Did the word of God come to pass? Yes. That's the danger of not receiving a prophecy because it can come to pass right in your eyes and you will not partake. It can come to pass in your own eye and you will, you will be in wow, but your, your, your own belief will make you not to uh, um, get it and appropriate it into your life. Remember when we're talking about La Mano, you can be in a congregation and for example, the prophet is saying this is the season of the new. The prophet is saying this is the season where God will begin to do things where eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. The prophet is saying it's the year of the open door, it's the year of the supernatural. The prophet is saying it's the year of the Holy Ghost and fire. If there's three, five, six people receiving that word and you sitting there in unbelief, it will come to pass in their lives and you'll watch them walk in that word while you sit there and not walk in it. It will come to pass because someone believed it. In Samaria, the food was released. This man actually saw it, but didn't even repent. Tried to control what he didn't even believe in and he was crushed and he didn't participate. Not a good thing. Cancel for today. If God, when you have a word of prophecy, do like Mary, the mother of Jesus, did. Is it a surprise even in her later years? She said, whatever this boy tells you to do, do it. Because she understands the principle. Now, let's go back to the New Testament. Zachariah, he was in the temple and they said, hey, you're going to have a child. He said, how is it going to be? Now, now, sometimes people would say, oh, why did Mary say, um, how will it come to be? And then she was instructed. And then Zachariah said the same thing, but he felt like he felt like his, he, he was punished because his mouth was sealed. What was the difference? Go back and read. It's right there. The angel said, because you did not believe. Angel Gabriel, awesome angel. He wouldn't tell you what. He, he's more, he, 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 in my opinion, he carried the same kind of anointing, manifestation, and spirit of Elijah, Elisha, and uh, um, John the Baptist. In the sense that he's not a, he's a no-nonsense angel. When he talks, he's saying what that he has said. And he's not coming to give you an opinion. And all he expects of you is to do with agree. Now he's talking to Zechariah and he could tell. You know, they can tell if we're believing or not. They really can. Oh, God help us, right? But listen, when God speaks, because he speaks, he will speak to you. The day he tells you something, believe him. Do yourself a favor and say, I receive. Do You can even go to the extent of behaving like the man in the world that say, Lord, help my unbelief. If you trace, if you see that there's a trace of your mind shaking somewhere, say, Lord, I believe this prophecy. I take this prophecy, help my unbelief. And you will be bailed out. You'll be safe. You'll receive your prophecy. Two cases. The man with the supply in Samaria and Zechariah. Thank God for the grace of God in the New Testament, right? Thank God that Zechariah, yes, I know he wasn't operating under the New Covenant yet, but he was already at a place where I believe the mercy of God was so much upon him that although he was not able to speak to his child in the stomach with his word, 
he missed that privilege yes pregnant women speak to your pregnancy always talk to your child let daddy give you word to prophesy on your child while in your womb it's a very healthy thing to do it's a very healthy um you determine and help your child to be to navigate life from a higher place you know so don't play with prophesying to your child when they're in the womb. Speak their destiny to them from the womb. Hear what daddy is saying about that child and talk to that child in the womb. You're still planning to have children. Begin to prophesy to them even before they get into your womb. So that when they get in there, the manifestation, tangibility of their walking in the anointing will be outstanding. Amen. Zachariah missed the, the opportunity to do that, but God gave it to gave it back to him. Thank God that he was able to speak and see what he did. He learned from his unbelief and prophesied on his child. This tell you and I that he missed that opportunity to do it even when he was in the womb. Woman, man, when God speaks to you, he's talking to you about a child that's still in your womb. Listen, believe God. If he's telling you you're going to have triplets, believe him and speak it to that womb that seems empty and it will come to pass. If you choose not to, it might happen to you like the man in Samaria. It might come to pass like with Zechariah. But listen, if you repent, you will enjoy the full benefit like Zechariah did. So what are we saying? Prophecies might be delayed. Prophecy might never come to pass in your life. It might come to pass in everyone else's life, but your life because you refuse to believe. Make up your mind to be a believer and to live in belief. Amen. Refuse to live in unbelief. Refuse anything that suggests not believing the word of God. The shield of faith, your protection in God is the rema word that God has given you and you have chosen to hold on to it. Amen. Hold on to your word of prophecy. Speak it, pray it, and watch it come to pass. Amen. Pray for tomorrow's service and enjoy your weekend. Amen and amen.